the mindsets. Whether human qualities are things that can be cultivated or things that are carved in stone is an old issue. What these beliefs mean for you is a new one. What are the consequences of thinking that your intelligence or personality is something you can develop, as opposed to something that is a fixed, deep-seated trait? Let's first look in on the age-old, fiercely waged debate about human nature, and then return to the question of what these beliefs mean for you. Why do people differ? An individual's intelligence is a fixed quantity, a quantity which cannot be increased. We must protest and react against this brutal pessimism. With practice, training, and above all, method, we manage to increase our attention, our memory, our judgment and literally to become more intelligent than we were before. What does all this mean for you? The two mindsets. Every situation calls for a confirmation of their intelligence, personality, or character. Every situation is evaluated, will I succeed or fail? Will I look smart or dumb? Will I be accepted or rejected? Will I feel like a winner or a loser? To give you a better sense of how the two mindsets work, imagine as vividly as you can that you are a young adult having a really bad day. One day, you go to a class that is really important to you and that you like a lot. The professor returns the midterm papers to the class. You got a C+. You're very disappointed. That evening on the way back to your home, you find that you've gotten a parking ticket. Being really frustrated, you call your best friend to share your experience but are sort of brushed off. Here are some more ways to think about mindsets. Think about someone you know who is steeped in the fixed mindset. Think about how they're always trying to prove themselves and how they're super sensitive about being wrong or making mistakes. Did you ever wonder why they were this way? Are you this way? Now you can begin to understand why. Think about someone you know who is skilled in the growth mindset someone who understands that important qualities can be cultivated. Think about the ways they confront obstacles. Think about the things they do to stretch themselves. What are some ways you might like to change or stretch yourself? Okay, now imagine you've decided to learn a new language and you've signed up for a class. A few sessions into the course, the instructor calls you to the front of the room and starts throwing questions at you one after another. Put yourself in a fixed mindset. Your ability is on the line. Can you feel everyone's eyes on you? Can you see the instructor's face evaluating you? Feel the tension, feel your ego bristle and waver. What else are you thinking and feeling? Now put yourself in a growth mindset. You're a novice that's why you're here. You're here to learn. The teacher is a resource for learning. Feel the tension leave you. Feel your mind open up. The message is, you can change your mindset. Inside the mindsets. People are all born with a love of learning, but the fixed mindset can undo it. Think of a time you were enjoying something doing a crossword puzzle, playing a sport, learning a new dance. Then it became hard and you want it out. Maybe you suddenly felt tired, dizzy, bored, or hungry. Next time this happens, don't fool yourself. It's the fixed mindset. Put yourself in a growth mindset. Picture your brain forming new connections as you meet the challenge and learn. Keep on going. It's tempting to create a world in which we're perfect. Ah, I remember that feeling from grade school. We can choose partners, make friends, hire people who make us feel faultless. But think about it, do you want to never grow? Next time you're tempted to surround yourself with worshippers, go to church. In the rest of your life, seek constructive criticism. Is there something in your past that you think measured you? A test score? A dishonest or callous action? Being fired from a job? Being rejected? Focus on that thing. Feel all the emotions that go with it. Now put it in a growth mindset perspective. Look honestly at your role in it, but understand that it doesn't define your intelligence or personality. Instead, ask, what did I, or can I, learn from that experience? How can I use it as a basis for growth? Carry that with you instead. How do you act when you feel depressed? Do you work harder at things in your life, or do you let them go? Next time you feel low, 
Put yourself in a growth mindset. Think about learning, challenge, confronting obstacles. Think about effort as a positive, constructive force, not as a big drag. Try it out. Is there something you've always wanted to do but were afraid you weren't good at? Make a plan to do it. The truth about ability and accomplishment. Think about your hero. Do you think of this person as someone with extraordinary abilities who achieved with little effort? Now go find out the truth. Find out the tremendous effort that went into their accomplishment and admire them more. Think of times other people outdid you and you just assumed they were smarter or more talented. Now consider the idea that they just used better strategies, taught themselves more, practiced harder, and worked their way through obstacles. You can do that too, if you want to. Are there situations where you get stupid where you disengage your intelligence? Next time you're in one of those situations, get yourself into a growth mindset. Think about learning and improvement, not judgment, and hook it back up. Do you label your kids? This one is the artist, and that one is the scientist. Next time, remember that you're not helping them even though you may be praising them. Remember our study where praising kids' ability lowered their IQ scores. Find a growth mindset way to compliment them. More than half of our society belongs to a negatively stereotyped group. First you have all the women, and then you have all the other groups who are not supposed to be good at something or other. Give them the gift of the growth mindset. Create an environment that teaches the growth mindset to the adults and children in your life, especially the ones who are targets of negative stereotypes. Even when the negative label comes along, they'll remain in charge of their learning. Sports, the mindset of champion. Are there sports you always assumed you're bad at? Well, maybe you are, but then maybe you aren't. It's not something you can know until you've put in a lot of effort. Some of the world's best athletes didn't start out being that hot. If you have a passion for a sport, put in the effort and see. Sometimes being exceptionally endowed is a curse. These athletes may stay in a fixed mindset and not cope well with adversity. Is there a sport that came easily to you until you hit a wall? Try on the growth. Mindset and go for it again. Character is an important concept in the sports world, and it comes out of a growth mindset. Think about times you've needed to reach deep down inside in difficult sports matches. Think about them growth mindset champions from this chapter and how they do it. What could you do next time to make sure you're in a growth mindset in the pinch? Athletes with a growth mindset find success in learning and improving, not just winning. The more you can do this, the more rewarding sports will be for you and for those who play them with you. Business, Mindset and Leadership Are you in a fixed mindset or growth mindset workplace? Do you feel people are just judging you or are they helping you develop? Maybe you could try making it a more growth mindset place, starting with yourself. Are there ways you could be less defensive about your mistakes? Could you profit more from the feedback you get? Are there ways you can create more learning experiences for yourself? How do you act toward others in your workplace? Are you a fixed mindset boss, focused on your power more than on your employees' well-being? Do you ever reaffirm your status by demeaning others? Do you ever try to hold back high-performing employees because they threaten you? Consider ways to help your employees develop on the job, apprenticeships, workshops, coaching sessions. Think about how you can start seeing and treating your employees as your collaborators, as a team. Make a list of strategies and try them out. Do this even if you already think of yourself as a growth mindset boss. Well-placed support and growth-promoting feedback never hurt. If you run a company, look at it from a mindset perspective. Does it need you to do a Lou Gerstner on it? Think seriously about how to root out elitism and create a culture of self-examination, open communication and teamwork. Read Gerstner's excellent book Who Says Elephants Can't Dance to see how it's done. Is your workplace set up to promote groupthink? If so, the whole decision-making process is in trouble. Create ways to foster alternative views and constructive criticism. Assign people to play the devil's advocate, 
taking opposing viewpoints, so you can see the holes in your position. Get people to wage debates that argue different sides of the issue. Have an anonymous suggestion box that employees must contribute to as part of the decision making process. Remember, people can be independent. Thinkers and team players at the same time. Help them fill both roles. Relationships, mindsets in love, or not. After a rejection, do you feel judged, bitter, and vengeful? Or do you feel hurt, but hopeful of forgiving, learning, and moving on? Think of the worst rejection you ever had. Get in touch with all the feelings, and see if you can view it from a growth mindset. What did you learn from it? Did it teach you something about what you want and don't want in your life? Did it teach you some positive things that were useful in later relationships? Can you forgive that person and wish them well? Can you let go of the bitterness? Picture your ideal love relationship. Does it involve perfect compatibility, no disagreements, no compromises, no hard work? Please think again. In every relationship, issues arise. Try to see them from a growth mindset. Problems can be a vehicle for developing greater understanding and intimacy. Allow your partner to air his or her differences, listen carefully, and discuss them in a patient and caring manner. You may be surprised at the closeness this creates. Are you a blamer like me? It's not good for a relationship to pin everything on your partner. And create your own Maurice and blame him instead. Better yet, work toward curing yourself of the need to blame. Move beyond thinking about fault and blame all the time. Think of me trying to do that too. Are you shy? Then you really need the growth mindset. Even if it doesn't cure your shyness, it will help keep it from messing up your social interactions. Next time you're venturing into a social situation, think about these things, how social skills are things you can improve, and how social interactions are for learning and enjoyment, not judgment. Keep practicing this. Parents, teachers and coaches, where do mindsets come from? Every word and action from parent to child sends a message. Tomorrow, listen to what you say to your kids and tune into the messages you're sending. Are they messages that say, you have permanent traits and I'm judging them? Or are they messages that say you're a developing person and I'm interested in your development? How do you use praise? Remember that praising children's intelligence or talent, tempting as it is, sends a fixed mindset message. It makes their confidence and motivation more fragile. Instead, try to focus on the process as they use their strategies, effort, or choices. Practice working the process praise into your interactions with your children. Watch and listen to yourself carefully when your child messes up. Remember that constructive criticism is feedback that helps the child understand how to fix something. It's not feedback that labels or simply excuses the child. At the end of each day, write down the constructive criticism and the process praise you've given your kids. Parents often set goals their children can work toward. Remember that having innate talent is not a goal. Expanding skills and knowledge is. Pay careful attention to the goals you set for your children. If you're a teacher, remember that lowering standards doesn't raise students' self-esteem. But neither does raising standards without giving students ways of reaching them. The growth mindset gives you a way to set high standards and have students reach them. Try presenting topics in a growth framework and giving students process feedback. I think you'll like what happens. Do you think of your slower students as kids who will never be able to learn well? Do they think of themselves as permanently dumb? Instead, try to figure out what they don't understand and what learning strategies they don't have. Remember that great teachers believe in the growth of talent and intellect and are fascinated by the process of learning. Are you a fixed mindset coach? Do you think first and foremost about your record and your reputation? Are you intolerant of mistakes? Do you try to motivate your players through judgment? That may be what's holding up your athletes. Try on the growth mindset. Instead of asking for mistake-free games, ask for full commitment and full effort. Instead of judging the players, give them the respect and the coaching they need to develop. 
As parents, teachers, and coaches, our mission is developing people's potential. Let's use all the lessons of the growth mindset and whatever else we can to do this. Changing mindsets. Every one of us has a journey to take. It starts by accepting that we all have both mindsets. Then we learn to recognize what triggers our fixed mindset. Failures? Criticism? Deadlines? Disagreements? And we come to understand what happens to us when our fixed mindset persona is triggered. Who is this persona? What's its name? What does it make us think, feel, and do? How does it affect those around us? Importantly, we can gradually learn to remain in a growth mindset place despite the triggers, as we educate our persona and invite it to join us on our growth mindset journey. Ideally, we will learn more and more about how we can help others on their journey too. The road ahead. Change can be tough, but I've never heard anyone say it wasn't worth it. Maybe they're just rationalizing, the way people who've gone through a painful initiation say it was worth it. But people who've changed can tell you how their lives have been enhanced. They can tell you about things they have now that they wouldn't have had, and ways they feel now that they wouldn't have felt. Did changing toward a growth mindset solve all my problems? No. But I know that I have a different life because of it a richer one. And that I'm a more alive, courageous, and open person because of it. It's for you to decide whether change is right for you now. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But either way, keep the growth mindset in your thoughts. Then, when you bump up against obstacles, you can turn to it. It will always be there for you, showing you a path into the future.